Hey guys, how's it going? I know I haven't posted a video in a long time. Uh, I've just been crazy busy, but I wanted to make a video tonight. We just finished up our SRT training here in Mississippi, and uh, this topic was coming up of angle shooting today, uh, working with the sniper guys. And in addition to that, this dude here, right, keeps coming across my Instagram page, my Facebook page. There's all these memes about him and all this stuff right now. And um, everyone sees this photo of this guy. Obviously, this is from, if you don't know, the, the recent uh, attack in uh, Las Vegas. And um, I'm not trying to make light of it. This, I know there's a lot of memes and stuff going around with this guy in it. And <clears throat> a lot of people saw that photo and they go, Oh man, this guy's crazy, he's drunk, he's whatever, America, flipping off the bad guy and all this. And I see this photo and I go, out of everyone ducking and this guy standing there <clears throat> where he looks crazy for doing so, he's actually onto something and I'm going to show you why. So there's two quick topics I want to talk about. I want to talk about this dude, right? And I want to talk about some general active shooter response stuff. So I'm going to try to go through this quickly. I'm not doing this to belittle anyone in the attack. I'm not trying to say that if I was there, I would have done this and this is what you should have done. I just want to share some information with people that may not know this stuff because it's something that's never come across uh, their lives in context. They've never needed to know it, but it's something you should know. We continuously hear, and I see it on the TV and the news and a lot of people putting it out, and I'm not saying they're wrong, right? Run, hide, fight, run, hide, fight, run, hide, fight. There's some truth to that. In my personal opinion or professional opinion, I believe there's more to it than just run, hide, fight. I have an acronym for the training that I perform. It's SLIME. I know the acronym sucks. I'm sorry. I wish I had a cooler one. I don't, right? And I'm going to go through it real quick. Size reduction, get small, right? Locate the threat. Identify what the threat is. Based on that information, now I move, right? And then I either engage, escape, or evade, right? <clears throat> Sounds real obvious, but let's go into the first two things real quick. So the other ones, I will make a video later on. I was It was getting way too long, and I don't want to... It's not that I'll bore you guys with the information, but I, I want to just make this video focused on the first two. And this is a perfect example uh, here, watching this guy flip off the dude on the 32nd floor... Um, in these photos that are going around. So, size reduction. Traditionally, you hear size reduction, and what do you think? You think get down, okay? Get down is, the, the reason you get down is to make yourself small. But in reference to what? If I don't locate the threat, how can I get small to the threat? And there's something else with getting down. Getting down in a crowded environment is extremely dangerous and I don't commit myself to the ground unless I have to because of fear of getting trampled. We see it in riots at uh, you know football games or soccer games right that the uh, fight breaks out and everyone tries to run down the the bleachers and people fall on the staircase and they just get trampled to death. We see it on Black Friday with people trying to bum rush Walmart the first couple people get knocked down and everyone just runs right over them. They get trampled, right? So in a crowded environment where there's 20 to 40,000 people jammed into a stadium, and again, I'm not armchair quarterbacking. I'm just pointing something out. If we get on the ground, it is extremely dangerous, not only from, from the, I may get hit by the attacker, but I may get trampled. So in a crowd of 20 to 40,000 people, I probably have a higher likelihood of getting trampled than I do getting shot, right? Just statistically. So with that being said, to locate the threat now allows me the ability to get small in relation to where the threat is located. And this is what I mean by that. So let's just look at something really quick. 
if I'm the bad guy and I'm on the same level, the same elevation plane as my target, and they're standing in front of me, we're going to pretend the bottle is, is the target. They're standing in front of me and we say, get down. They reduce their size. They're now harder for me to engage unless I'm standing right next to them, but let's just keep that out of it. Just We're just talking angles here. They're harder for me to engage because now they've reduced their size. Our body is taller than it is wide for most of us at least, right? So <clears throat> with that being said, if the threat is on the roof of a building, okay? Now, let's look at it again. They're standing on the ground, but now I come up onto the roof and I look over the edge of the roof and there's the people down there and I'm gonna try to attack them. Bang, 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 bang. Everyone's running around, oh my God, oh my God, we don't know what to do. The reaction is because it's been taught, get down, get down, people lay down. Now what happened is from this, because I haven't located the threat yet, I actually made myself a bigger target to someone who has an elevated position. So if I realize that they're on the roof and people communicate and identify where it's coming from and I locate and then I identify what the attack is, if I stand up, now all of a sudden I've actually made myself smaller. So it's a, it's a really obvious when I show it like that, but it's been so ingrained in our minds, you know, get down on the ground would be how I get small, but it's more complicated than that. So the other thing with this is the people who were being attacked in Las Vegas, many of them were saying they didn't know where the attack was coming from. And this comes back again to locate. Locate is so important. So how can I fight something if I don't know where the hell it's coming from? And how can I fight something if I don't know what it is or where it's coming from, right? So, and again, I'm not, I'm not hammering them. These are just important lessons learned so that if we find ourselves in one of these situations, uh, hopefully we'll be better prepared. So, I have a little drawing right here. <clears throat> Bear with me. So what happens is the people think there's multiple attackers. They don't know where the attack is coming from. Many times what happens in an urban environment, right? Think of, I want you to do this next time you're, you're hanging out in between two homes or you're, you're in an alleyway uh, or between two big buildings or anything like that. And you hear a car coming. The car's coming from this direction. But what happens is you think, right, that the car is actually coming from this direction. Because of this, the sound from the vehicle comes and bounces off this wall and hits you from this direction. So without locating the target, what happens is the people running from the threat many times will run around this corner and run right to the threat because they're going off of the sound, but they haven't actually like visually identified and located where it's coming from. So the people were running back and forth and they were running toward the tar toward the threat and then rounds were hitting the ground in front of them and they were like, oh my gosh, here's bullets, but it sounds like it's coming from behind me. Then they turn and go to run away. The guys start shooting again and they hear the sound coming from the front of them, probably ricocheting off the other buildings, right? And it makes them turn around and, and second guess their thing. Now, again, no one was expecting the shooter to be on the 32nd floor of the building, right? but he was. So again, we need to locate. Once we locate and we identify what is the threat, how many, and where is it coming from, then I can make the proper judgment call of where do I move to to find cover, concealment, evade, escape, engage, or whatever. So one other topic real quick. In this size reduction thing where we're talking about this, right? So without Getting into it, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this down really short because explaining long distance shooting was turning into this crazy shit. So I'm just gonna really jump right into it. If the guy's on the 32nd floor of the hotel, he's roughly 116 plus yards off the ground. If you look at the math, right, you can figure the math out. I've got it here. So him being that high off the ground, he's shooting down at the at the people on an angle so all of a sudden he's already coming in the rounds are already coming in at an angle what people don't understand about ballistics is this 
This drawing is obviously not to scale. If I'm shooting a 308, which is a big caliber, a big hunting caliber, a big long distance uh, law enforcement rifle uh, or military rifle round, right? One of the rounds uh, he was using, I could tell by looking at the photos that have been released as if those are real. If I'm aiming at this target here, right? At a, at a thousand yards and I don't move and someone drove a double decker bus in between me and the target at the 200 yard line. Most people would believe that this bus would be in the way. And if I tried to shoot it, bam, I'm going to hit this bus, right? And my bullet's going to stop. The reality is the way the ballistics work at a thousand yards with the average 308 round for all you gun guys out there, don't hammer me on this. I know there's tons of different rounds, but this is for people who don't understand this stuff. At, at the 200 yard line, the max elevation of that bullet with a 308 will be upwards of 30 feet in the air. So that means that I could park a double decker bus at the 200 yard line, right? Uh, coming off the target, which is if this is zero and he, I'm here at a thousand, right? <clears throat> thousand yards back. This is going to be over 30 feet or roughly 30 feet in the air, which means the bullet impacting the target is not actually impacting it on this plane, as one would think. It's actually coming down and dropping into the target on an angle. So now if I take the shooter and I bring him up into an elevated position like he is up on a rooftop or in the building in the, in the hotel, gravity still is going to affect this the entire way. So now with him being up here, the round, see he's going to perceive this distance to be longer because this is the longest line of this type of triangle, right? But gravity is still going to affect it for at least a thousand yards because of a thousand yard shot. So when he shoots it, those ballistics, he's still, the, the scope is still set to launch that bullet up as it would if it was going this way. So that ballistic is still there, a trajectory, which now brings this angle in even more aggressive as it comes down in this direction. Why is that important? That's important. Now, obviously he wasn't shooting from a thousand yards. I understand that, but this is the thing. This guy looking at the threat, see this angle, this guy looking at the threat, right? If he lays down because this round is coming in, because if this was the actual angle that he's looking at the guy from, and then you put in the ballistics where the bullet actually drops, when he lays down like this, he would make himself a bigger target than him standing here like this because the round is coming this way. So if you just look at the angle of his arm, that round coming in this way to him with the added angle of the ballistics, right, bullet dropping in, if he lays down, he makes himself a bigger threat or a bigger target to the threat. Let's say you didn't make yourself bigger because the round's coming down at a 45 degree angle. Well then, if it's an even 45 degree angle, then maybe you don't get bigger by laying down and maybe you don't get smaller by staying standing. But if I have the choice of keeping my body the same exact size, whether I was standing up or laying down because of the angle of the shot, the risk of getting trampled and getting shot now happens when I lay down. The risk of getting uh, shot remains when I stand up. But while I'm standing, I now have the ability to move. It's very hard for me to move when I'm laying down. So laying down, staying stationary. Now I can't, I'm not a moving target. My target size increased, right? And I, I may be getting trampled. Whereas if I stay standing, right, I can now move back and forth and be a moving target. My size hasn't increased by staying standing and I don't run the risk of getting trampled. So just something to keep in mind. For active shooter response, I need to reduce my size, but my size reduction has to be in relation 
to where the threat is attacking me from. So anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, hopefully you guys can come out to one of my active shooter response uh, trainings. If you never make it out to one of mine, I would look. There's a lot of companies that are doing great training around the country. Get some training. Go see these people. Go jump into someone's class. If someone who wants to commit evil and wants to do crime, they're going to do it. We can put laws in place, right, not to get political, but it's against the law to murder people, right? And people who want to do it, whether they do it with guns, a truck, a bomb, with machetes, with hatchets, when evil wants to find a way to attack, it's going to try to attack. We need to stay vigilant. Hopefully you can find some training. Maybe you come to one of our courses if it's in your area. If not, look it up. Uh, there's training all over the country. There's a lot of great guys out there, a lot of great veterans who are putting training out there. So see if you can plug in. It's worth the investment, I promise you. Anyway, hope that video helps. And uh, stay vigilant out there, guys.